What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I have just finished my first year of UBC Engineering, and I've been using this 11-inch M1 iPad Pro since the start of the school year. My iPad Pro has, with how to doubt become one of my most essential tech devices as an engineering student or just a student in general. In this video, I'll share with you exactly what I used my iPad Pro for this year and my perspective of it as an engineering student. Let's get into it. Starting with what I actually use my iPad Pro for, I primarily use it for two main use cases, school related stuff and then everything else. For the school related category, I'm talking about things like note taking with the Apple Pencil, reading through PDF textbooks, and managing and submitting my assignments and homework files on the Canvas app. For the everything else category, it's pretty much just mundane tasks like watching YouTube videos, browsing the web, and playing the occasional game. I will make it clear that although I do get a lot of utility out of my iPad Pro, it is not my main computer. That title goes to my Dell XPS 15. As an engineering student, a lot of what I do with my iPad Pro involves note-taking, reading textbooks and lecture slides, completing homework assignments with PDFs, and managing all of those files. For this use case, the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil is far superior in my opinion compared to the traditional pen and paper method especially because of the sheer number of PDFs that us engineering students have to download, mark up, and then submit onto Canvas. The iPad Pro just makes the process so much more intuitive and convenient. The note-taking experience on the iPad Pro is quite pleasant, especially with a robust app such as GoodNotes, which is what I personally use. Never thought that I could effectively take notes on an iPad, but I really do appreciate the arsenal of note-taking tools that I have at my disposal with the Apple Pencil. For engineering specifically, being able to quickly draw diagrams with straight lines, writing out weird characters in math and physics, and doing quick sketches is where the iPad Pro shines in terms of its functionality. There's just a lot of stuff in engineering that is very difficult to type up on a computer for notes, like vectors and complex equations in math. Additionally, as a student, you'll definitely be doing a lot of pre-reading before lectures, and being able to highlight and annotate PDF textbooks is a really nice feature to have. Regarding the software experience on the iPad Pro, I pretty much just live in three apps on this iPad. GoodNotes, my main note-taking app, Canvas, the software that all my courses use to post announcements, grades, and assignments, and YouTube. <laughs> that means I don't ever really run into the primary computer limitations that the iPad definitely has, as this is really a companion device to my Dell XPS 15 laptop. The only times I do run into iPadOS limitations are when accessing certain websites for class or downloading certain files. Speaking of files, as an engineering student, I can pretty much only manage PDF files on this iPad Pro, as there's not really much I can do with other file types. Switching to more of the hardware features of the iPad Pro, I personally have the 11-inch model, and I believe that it is the perfect size for a student. Large enough that I have enough room to take notes and to see a decent amount of content on it, but it's small enough that it's very portable in my backpack and can fit on those extremely small pullout desks in some lecture halls. <coughs> IRC. It barely weighs anything in my backpack and it has replaced me having to carry multiple binders and notebooks to campus. Despite this, battery life on the 11-inch iPad Pro is really good, especially for how thin it is. For context, my days as an engineering student can range between 3 to 7 hours of classes and being on campus for 5 to 10 hours a day. Often, I'll be clocking in like 6 to 8 hours of screen on time just from taking notes or completing assignments, and I'll be left with around 30% battery life at the end of the day. So this iPad Pro can definitely keep up with how insane engineering timetables can be. Much of that battery life optimization is mainly due to the efficiency of the M1 chip that is inside this iPad Pro. And I honestly think that it's really overkill for a tablet like this and for what I use the iPad Pro for. I haven't experienced any slowdowns at all and I expect it to be that way for at least the rest of my engineering degree. 
Speaking of the rest of my degree, something that I'll definitely be staring at for the rest of my degree will be the screen of this iPad Pro. As much as I would have liked it to have been a mini LED display like its bigger sibling, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, the LCD display on this 11 inch model is still really good. It's bright, crisp, high res, colorful, and all the other adjectives that describe a good display. Also, having the 120Hz high refresh rate ProMotion screen is just such a nice quality of life feature that it warranted me spending the extra $300 to get this instead of the iPad Air. Some of the other contributing factors as to why I got this Pro instead of the Air include Face ID, which I much prefer over the iPad Air's Touch ID, and the quad speaker setup on the iPad Pro, which are amazing for watching any YouTube videos or movies. The 11 inch M1 iPad Pro has been such a valuable companion device in my time so far as an engineering student at UBC, but I believe that it's just that a companion device. Engineering requires us to complete tasks that are either difficult or just straight up impossible to perform on an iPad, like 3D modeling and physics simulations in complex CAD software. But if you solely view the iPad Pro as a secondary device to a main computer, that's where the iPad Pro really does shine in terms of its functionality. From studying for seven to nine hours a day for finals to watching season three of The Mandalorian on Disney Plus. My 11 inch iPad Pro has been an amazing device for my studies and I definitely appreciate using it as an engineering student. Well, that has been it for this video. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.